just a few weeks ago in Kamloops, BC, which is about a three hour drive from where I live in the Fraser Valley. The bodies of 215 indigenous children were found in unmarked graves on the site of an old residential school. I feel like it is my duty as a majority white person living in a land that was colonized and that actively participated in the genocide and taking down of a whole culture to speak up about this. But I especially feel the need to speak up about this because I am also a small percentage Métis. And Métis is a band that is in Manitoba, uh, Canada, and was uh, founded by, uh, was very closely um, associated with the French-speaking peoples that also came to Canada. So for those of you who don't know, a small little history lesson here, at the same time that the British were colonizing uh, Canada and the United States, basically all of North America, the French were as well. But due to many things, the French Revolution being one of them, uh, the French never managed to colonize Canada and the United States the way that the British did. Uh, eventually, the French were beaten back and left, but not, af not until they had put a significant foothold in which is now where Quebec is in Canada. And this is why French is the other national language of Canada. The French had a far better relationship with the indigenous peoples than the British did. And even though the French were also blatantly Catholic, uh, and one of the reasons why the Catholic schools were so prevalent throughout all of uh, Canada as it began to be colonized and settled, um, they, the, the French had a much better relationship with uh, the indigenous peoples that they came into contact with. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. Um, but were the atrocities committed towards indigenous peoples on the same level and scale that there were from the British? No. No, there were not. This year, there has been a major cry because of these 215 bodies that were found in Kamloops, as well as some that were recently found in Saskatchewan. I'm going to link news articles about both of them down below. Uh, Indigenous peoples all across Canada have been calling out for a nationwide Cancel Canada Day to happen. And Canada Day celebrations are already not going ahead this year because of COVID, uh, because it was not uh, deemed appropriate to set up celebrations in individual cities and provinces when some of them are on completely different levels of being opened or opened up. It was decided that uh, major celebrations were not going to happen. Some provinces like New Brunswick have completely cancelled any and all celebrations in order to honour the original people of Canada, which were the Indigenous peoples. And so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Every Child Matters campaign, the Cancel Canada, Canada Day campaign, what those mean for me, what it is that you can do if you are someone living in North America, living on the unceded territory of Indigenous peoples, and what you can do to support those people, to listen to them, and how you can help some of the mistakes that our ancestors made go not not go away but to to be better i don't feel like i'm the most ideal person to be talking about this however i feel like with my particular platform and the people who are here that watch me this is something that is probably very near and dear to your own hearts as well and something that you would like some guidance in so as a canadian who is mostly white and is mostly contains the blood of the colonizer 
but also as somebody who does have Métis heritage and blood of the colonized, I feel like it is at least my duty to point you in the right direction of um, where you can learn more about some of these things, what the history of it is, and um, you know, just to, to give you some tips and some directions of go to where to educate yourself as I also educate myself. Um, I am wearing my Every Child Matters t-shirt, which I have purchased from a local Indigenous seller and it was made by Indigenous people. And that's my first tip for you is whenever and wherever possible, if you are going to purchase items that are of an Indigenous nature, like art, like uh, objects like totem poles, statues, dream catchers or other things like that to purchase them directly from indigenous sellers. So for instance, if you would like to get yourself a pair of nice furry leather mukluks, you can do that. You absolutely can. There's nothing to say that you cannot wear pieces like that. The question is, who's making them? Who's profiting from them? And what are the supplies and the skill level like? If you're buying them from Walmart, you are supporting people promoting uh, you know, low paid labor in uh, clothing factories, uh, fast fashion that is happening overseas, away from the countries where those clothing items and pieces uh, originated from and were made from. However, if you wanted to purchase your set from a company like say, Manitoba Mukluks, which is run completely and entirely by indigenous peoples, then you are supporting indigenous creators, business people, and you're supporting more local practices as well, which is great. When we do that, we encourage the indigenous populations that are actively teaching their children and the next generation these skills, how to continue to do these things that their ancestors have been doing for hundreds if not thousands of years. And we also put the money back into our own economies, into the, our, our lo local populations and our own country's economy, and not into the pockets of big businesses that are capitalist and greedier in nature. Yes, all businesses are out there to make money. This is, this is not a fact that's up for dispute. This is how it is. However, the intentions and the practices behind a company like, say, Manitoba Mukluks, or a company like Joe Fresh or George, a part of Superstore Loblaws or Walmart, are completely and utterly different. And in one, you support ethically made pieces that are done usually on a smaller scale with higher skill level and higher quality of materials and you're supporting local people to continue to do what they're doing or you can support big businesses which quite frankly just don't give a fuck about you or I as long as we continue to put money back in their pockets. Another thing that we can do to support the community is to listen. We need to remember that however uncomfortable it feels to realize that our ancestors actively oppressed, suppressed, murdered, humiliated, and stripped away the culture and identity from an entire population of people, as uncomfortable as that knowledge is for us to come to terms with, our discomfort pales in comparison to the discomfort that these cultures have had to deal with for generations now. The thing about residential schools that a lot of people don't seem to realize is that they are still within living memory. The last residential school in Canada closed in, I believe, 1994. I will find out the accurate year and throw it up on the screen for you. 1994. If that number is correct, I was nine years old. I was in fourth grade attending a public school that was free for my parents to send me to because of their tax paying dollars. And at the same time that I was learning about the Haida and other peoples who are local to my area, there were people somewhere within Canada of indigenous descent that had been forcibly removed from their families, 
forced to stay at residential schools and were not allowed to speak their cultural languages, were not allowed to wear their cultural um, garb and um, traditional hairstyles, they were not allowed to have traditional tattoos, they were not allowed to partake in things like powwows and traditional dances. The number right now of estimated number of children, children, who died at the hands of the people who forced them to be in those residential schools in the first place is somewhere in Canada around the 5,000 mark. 5,000. That is absurd. That, that is... That, that number is a big number to begin with. If somebody handed you $5,000, you would be dancing in the streets excited. But when you think about each one of those dollars perhaps being an individual, a person, and then a child at that, it makes you sick to your stomach, doesn't it? The reason why so many of these children died is simply down to mistreatment, neglect, forced punishment, which basically equated to torture, and um, gross misconduct of the adults that were in charge of them. For the most part in Canada, the residential schools were led by the Catholic Church and were Catholic schools in nature. And there are also a lot of stories that are coming out now about how the priests and nuns and other people who were in charge of these children abused their power on multiple levels, going extremely inappropriately all the way over into SA. So we have, we have terrible, terrible history here. A lot of people might tell you that when you come up into Canada that it is so much better than the United States because we do not have the same level of racism that the United States is dealing with. And on some levels, that is true. The systemic racism that happens um, for things like funding of schools versus um, you know the populations, what they're paying in terms of tax dollars per zip code and county and stuff like that, yeah, we don't have that. If you go to a public school, <clears throat> It's funded by the population of, um, like it's, it's funded in comparison to like the ratio, like the number of children who are attending the school, not based on um, the income levels and the tax paying dollars that are happening from the people that live in the area. So if you live in a high density population with a, like a city with a lot of people attending a school, but then you also have, um, you know, you have a child attending a public school who lives in a village in a much smaller and much more, um, much less densely populated scenario, the ratio of funding that you're going to get is going to be based on the number of children attending the school, not the taxpaying dollars from that specific area. Municipalities will determine a lot of other things that happen within the school districts and stuff like that, what extra things go into the funding and stuff like that. But provincially and federally, there are laws set in place so that we don't have that same type of systemic racism for our school populations. However, with the history of our um, residential schools, as well as a lot of other things that are definitely clear racist tendencies amongst multiple populations in, in Canada, we also have a history of Japanese internment camps during World War II, and a number of other things that I could not possibly get into the full details to cover for you. Uh, the exploitation of Chinese labor in creating the Canadian Pacific Railway, um, and all of that kind of stuff. The, the, there are so, so many things that I can point to historically that our country has done. We are not better. We're, we're different than the United States plain and simple. Racism is still here. It is still prevalent in our society. We still meet people on a regular basis that have terrible things to say about people of color, people of different nationalities, people of different sexualities. The, the racism, the homophobic nature of a lot of these people, it, it is still inherent in my country. 
that is something that I hope that my children can see disappear within their lifetime or at least be much more minimized than it is now, but I know I probably won't see that in my own lifetime. So one of the biggest things that we can do is we can listen to the stories. We can get uncomfortable. We can get familiar with the history of what has happened in our areas. And then we can listen to the people who have been dealing with this for their entire lives because of our ancestors. And you might say, well, I'm not personally responsible for um, the proliferation of these racist tendencies, so why should it be on my shoulders? Because that's how life works. When our ancestors leave their messes behind for us to deal with, we end up having to take up the reins of that and choose to turn that that wagon in a different direction. They might have died at the reins, but now it's our job to pick them up and decide which way things are going to go. And we have that power. We have the ability to attend marches, rallies, and uh, other types of activist platforms if it is safe for you to do so in your area with all the COVID protocols and stuff that's going on. It is possible to uh, go on a variety of different social media platforms right now. TikTok is a really great one actually right now if you could believe it. Uh, look up Native Talk, the, the hashtag, and you will see a whole variety of different creators that are coming out, telling their stories, speaking their truths. And some of it is really uncomfortable to listen to and to watch. But when we sit in that discomfort, when we learn to hear about the pain and the experiences of other people and realize that our ancestors probably contributed to that or at least stood by and let it happen, we get empowered to do something to change it. Or at least that's my hope, is that you feel empowered to change it. In order to get to that place though first, you need to feel it. And you need to feel it to the level where it feels like your own family members are the ones that are affected. Because by chance of birth, it could have been your ancestors and your people that were affected by it and not you. Another thing that we can do is we can choose to study. We can choose to watch documentaries. We can choose to read books that talk about the experiences and the history of what happened so that we can better understand how things got to this level. And then the thing that we can do after we are educated is that we can then find those ridiculous laws or enforcements that are happening in our own areas and we can speak up. We can write letters to our heads of government. We can visit our city councils and petition for uh, racist or other types of rules to be removed because of their um, discriminatory practices. We can choose to uh, associate with people of Indigenous uh, descent and we can ask them what they personally would like from, from you as an ally, what you can do to support them and to help them. Maybe based on the individual, they might want you to listen to their stories and understand them. And they might just want to be heard for once and to feel like somebody is really listening. On the other hand, they might ask you to donate some money to a good cause that will help them to do things. They might ask you to sign petitions to shut down current um, residential school landmarks or um, other types of uh, memorabilia that are offensive to people who are descended from the people who suffered at the hands of their oppressors. You can petition your schools to make sure that they are teaching the whole and actual truth to your own children or to the children of your community in the local schools. You can request that 
different uh, memorials be held. Candlelight vig vigils can be held for remembering those souls and for supporting them. There are a variety of different things that we can do as descendants of the colonizers and we can choose to break the cycle. We can speak up when we see racism and wrongdoing happening and we can choose to actively participate in the making of our governments and laws, voting in our different council members, school board members, uh, local sheriffs for different counties if you live in the states or in um, the case of Canada, you can choose to help vote in um, different uh, people for your local municipal areas as well as your provincial and your federal uh, elections as well. There are a lot of different charities that are set up right now to help out the survivors and the sufferers of people from residential schools. There are a variety of people that you can support and I would recommend that if you have not already to check out the hashtag every child matters on whatever social media platforms you like to use and spend some time weeding through some of those posts, reading what people have had to say, some of their experiences and see if there's ways that you can get involved at the local level. I am going to link down below some relevant news articles and if I can find some relevant charities that I feel would benefit from some extra money, then I am going to leave some of those linked down below as well. I am also personally going to take any AdSense money that I earn from this video and at the end of the month of July, I am going to donate the AdSense money that I make from this particular video to a local Every Child Matters uh, aimed charity at my own local level. And um, I will send out a receipt and notification via my email list. So if that is something that you would like to see proof of towards the end of July, if you'd like to get involved in that, or even just be on my email list in general, I will send that out towards the end of July or very early August. And I invite you to get involved in the uh, Every Child Matters campaign and see if we can together help support the indigenous populations of this land that we so proudly call our home. Because the truth is that at least in Canada, until we are true north, strong and free, as our national anthem goes, nobody is really strong and free. If freedom isn't available, to everyone who lives in that country, then no one is truly free because you will be profiting off of the exploitation and the suffering of other people. I do hope that this video has helped to inform you and opened your eyes. And I do hope that you will support some of the charities that are linked down below or to choose to get involved and see if we can make a difference and an impact. Again, I implore you to talk to people who are of true indigenous descent that actively live in their culture now that have much more of an understanding of a voice in this than me. I feel like I am the bridge to get you from one place to the other. I am grieving right now. Uh, Canada Day, I will not be celebrating as Canada Day. I will be using it as a day to read up more on the history of my country, of the indigenous peoples that were here, and I will be attempting to support my local indigenous population doing what I can be. And I won't be celebrating a country that was founded on uh, repression and genocide until I see more of a um, uh, more of a uh, of attitude of tackling this from my heads of government and uh, until I see more changes being made in that department. So thank you for sitting through the discomfort with my video today. I appreciate it and I appreciate your support for the indigenous populations of our different countries. And until I see you all again, please be wise, be wise, sorry, be brave. And instead of being magical, I think we're going to supplement today with be informed. Thank you.